<laughs> yeah, no doubt. We on air right now? Yeah, yeah, we on air right now. Yeah, I was trying to get it, like, fixed and stuff like that because, like, it's like a new, like, headphone type system. So, like, when you call in, like, you got to punch it in and stuff like that. But I'm glad you on air, man. You dope, man. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you reaching out, uh, being interested in the music. I know you checked out the Louis Armstrong song and the video and everything that I shot down there in New Orleans. So, you know, hats off for you to looking out for uh, new independent artists. I appreciate that. Nah, that was like ridiculously like it was impactful to me because like the way you portrayed the idea of New Orleans, like a lot of people think of like they still got the Katrina link to it and stuff like that. So you showed that it is a party livelihood place, but you also incorporated the paint and stuff like that. That was cool, man. That was dope. Yeah, yeah, they definitely uh, enjoy some of the stuff with uh, the festivals and the holidays. They got French Quarter Fest coming up, Jazz Fest coming up, and at those events, they kind of like to put on the voodoo face paint. Mm -hmm. Maybe do some of the Mardi Gras beads, uh, the umbrellas with the second line dancing, the mm -hmm. Mardi Gras Indians. So there's a lot of outfits. Mm -hmm. that kind of expressed themselves culturally to the people of New Orleans. So I wanted to portray that within the visual. So that's cool that you caught on to that. That's what's up, man. So, like, when you think of, like, doing every video um, you actually, like, like have produced and stuff like that, do you think of the concept or do you, like, um, leave it to the director or something like that? Or, you know, like, add the idea of, like, creative vision and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I'm an independent artist, so actually I've been directing oh, all my that's videos. that's dope. That's dope. Yeah, so I think about them a lot beforehand. I'll storyboard uh, with my brother, who actually shoots most of the videos for me. His name's Scott Harney. And uh, I sit down with him, and I, you know, I kind of try to relate what the message and the words of the song are mm -hmm. and how we could get that to translate to video format. So, yeah, there's definitely an awful lot of thought that goes into the, the video process. Oh, that's what's up, man. So, like, when you, when you conduct the song... Are you visualizing the video while you're doing the song? Like, do you see your, your lyrics in live action like that? Not necessarily. I think mm -hmm. I go ahead, like, when I'm in the studio process, I'm only thinking about the song within that moment. Oh, that's And after song. I record maybe, you know, five, ten songs the project's over with, mm -hmm. then I kind of go into that process, like, which one of these songs would most be visually appealing, you know? Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, it's kind of like a two-step process. Do the studio first and then think about the, the artistry afterwards. But they're definitely connecting, man. Mm -hmm. um, you you got to have good visuals nowadays in the YouTube generation to go along with the uh, the music. So um, I'm happy that I've been able to link the two together. Yeah, that's what's up. Because like, I see with certain like, major videos, like you just see like the green screen, like regular car, like three females and stuff like that. You know, it's like simple. Yeah. Man. It's a little uh, stereotypical, and mm -hmm. what I want to do is anything but that. I try to think outside the box, and I've been lucky enough to travel mm -hmm. around the world a lot. I actually did some other videos in Amsterdam, okay. overseas, yeah, and oh, I did that's stuff nice. in London Yeah, I would love well. to go there, man. Oh, man, that's amazing. Yeah, so, I mean, to me, it's like incorporating things like the food of the place, the music of the place, the people, the women, the sights, the sounds, the mm -hmm. buildings. Things like that are important to me. I really have done most of my videos out, like, in, I guess, nature or mm -hmm. in everyday sceneries, you know, mm -hmm. and all of it's done guerrilla style. Like, I really don't ask for anybody's permission. Uh, if you guys That's check out, sad. if you check out the London video, it's mm -hmm. called Catch Me If You Can. Oh, I definitely uh, I shot on, Yeah, I shot it on uh, the top of Trafalgar Square. Oh, and that's one of the big lions that's in front of their monument out there in the center of London. And I uh, definitely wasn't supposed to do that, but I got <laughs> three or four minutes of enough footage before they kicked me off of that. So, you know, like a lot of stuff isn't uh, necessarily in my permission, but I'm like, look, man, this is what I like doing. I want to showcase, you know, the city and the area that I'm in. Yeah, that's what's up. So, like, in your art form, at, uh, in, I mean, in your art form, do you, like, look up to anybody, have any influences while you was, like, growing up and stuff? Yeah, I mean... Of course, there's like national artists and stuff like that that everybody knows of. Like my favorites are uh, Notorious B.I.G. Uh -huh. uh, and Eminem and uh, probably Wu-Tang Clan. So those are some of the bigger ones. But I actually did grow up on the West Coast. So some of the underground stuff that was like a little unique and different. Um, I like stuff like Sage Francis. I know he's from back east out there. Aesop Rock, I like his stuff an awful lot. Uh, Cage comes to mind. 
Living Legends, mm-hmm. uh, Donald Funky Homo Sapien, oh. Murs. That's you know, so I don't know. I like underground music. Mm-hmm. I like pop music and kind of everything in between. You know what I'm saying? But the people I just mentioned are some of my influences. Yeah, that, that's what's up, man. So, like, when you're in the when you in the writing process, do you like listen to the instrumental for for its own story, or you you approach it with a different form of story? Well, I've done both. I remember when I first started, I would write the song without an instrumental, oh. and then I would kind of sit down with the producer mm-hmm. and I'd say, "Hey, this is the rhythm. This is kind of the BPM that I have in my head," and then we would build it from the ground up. Mm-hmm. And he would kind of play the drums, and then we'd add the instruments together. Um, Word up to Prospect, that's one of my producers out there in New Orleans, and we kind of started out like that. Mm-hmm. But as of late, I've just been getting the instrument instrumental sent to me, mm-hmm. and I kind of like the challenge of having to direct my delivery to whatever the producer gives me. Oh, that's what's up. So, you know, if it's a faster BPM, if it's a slower style of song, it kind of directs my delivery differently. Mm-hmm. And so I'm shifting to more of that process, getting the music first. That's cool, that's cool. So... Do you think your sound sounds more like West or like South or it's just like universal sound? Yeah, let's go with universal because, <laughs> like I said, man, I, I grew up on the West Coast, spent five years uh, down South. Mm-hmm. My dad's from New York. Oh, that's I traveled cool. all over Europe. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm kind of lost right now as for where <laughs> <laughs> my sound is from, man. But I'm cool because it, it does give me a lot of appeal. And I have noticed... I know you guys are up there in upstate New York. A lot of people mm-hmm. back east appreciate lyrics yeah. more oh, than man. some of the people in the south and the west. And That's I'm starting so to gain fan bases mm-hmm. in Toronto, New York, mm. Boston, mm-hmm. Pittsburgh, things like that. And so, you know, word up to everyone out east. I know that's where hip-hop started out there, yeah, man. Definitely. And um, people really appreciate the actual mm-hmm. wording and the meanings behind it. So yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, that's amazing because, like, a lot of people, they feel like they have to dumb it down just to, um, you know, go into the current trends of things and uh, right. current ideas. And you, because it's a younger generation, so a lot of people are trying to appeal to that generation but stretch over to the 90s yeah. babies and, you know, things like that, you know? Yeah, I understand. Hip hop's like 40 years old now, mm-hmm. and you have all the new school people, mm-hmm. and then you have all the old school people. I actually happen to kind of be like right in the middle. I'm 30 yeah. years old. Okay. So I, I grew up with Wu Tang, mm-hmm. Beastie Boys, Outkast, stuff like that, but I'm not afraid to play an ASAP Rocky record, That's a, song. a Hobson mm-hmm. record, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Some of the newer stuff. So I don't know. I feel like kind of lucky how I'm on both sides of the fence. Yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But there, it's, there is becoming a generational gap where people, I understand what you're saying, feel like they have to dumb it down for the younger kids. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's also the older guys who feel like they have to teach like wisdom and knowledge yeah. and everything that yeah. they touch. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of want to do a little of both. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So you may pick up a record and have some stuff that has a lot of like content in it, and you may have maybe some more shallow songs within the same mix. But at the end of the day, I'm the same person. You know what I'm exactly. saying? I just have more depth to mm-hmm. the artistry exactly because the artist is basically you know one person it's, it's you it's your it's your story it's 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 good bad you happy sad you know things like that so you know you're painting that that art you know so that's what's up right yeah man um and you know sometimes you you feel like having a drink and turning up mm-hmm. other days you feel like <laughs> honestly like maybe reading the bible maybe reading like a couple of novels and stuff like that it's exactly just, that's a that's me you know what i'm saying i'm not like consistent but what i try to do is capture those different emotions you know Mm -hmm. you have the ups and downs of life and when you feel really strongly within an emotion capture it grab the pen and grab the pad Mm -hmm. because you may not feel that way for a while you know so exactly try to portray all parts of your character that's that's what's up so like do you have any favorite song of yours like that might be yours or of another artist that just like reminds you of a point of life and you know it's just it got a certain deep feeling to it? <clears throat> um, I mean, Louis Armstrong is pretty pretty cool for the mm-hmm. culture of New Orleans, like we were talking about. Uh, but I just released a new joint called Jesus Peace. Oh, okay. And uh, we shot that out in Arizona in the Sedona Mountains and the Grand Canyon of Arizona. Mm-hmm. And that had a lot of meaning to me. Um, not even on a religious level. I know the title is Jesus Peace, yeah. but... <laughs> It was almost like a conversation with myself, like how far will I go 
mm. in the name of my career. Mm. You know, like what distance will I travel mm-hmm. in order to be successful? Mm-hmm. And um, like I was saying, I've been to Europe, I've been in the South, I've been on the West Coast. And so really, um, that's a good song that that actually has an awful lot of meaning to my life. So one of my favorites right now is Jesus Peace. That's what's up. So like, do you feel it? it's unfair at times that that people like artists of other nationalities are like compared to other artists you know like if if i'm if i'm hispanic i'm compared to fat joe or like if i'm right. caucasian i'm compared to eminem automatically you know like you could be yeah. your own current artist have your own sound like you know yeah i think it's totally unfair mm-hmm. um oftentimes when people review my music they will compare me to Eminem. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know, Atmosphere has done this before in the past. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, Ill Bill does this out in the East. Like, mm-hmm. the only person you can think of is Eminem. So yeah, that so actually wack. gets really tiring. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't think it's right to compare me to to people just within my race or my uh, demographic. I mean, some people have thought outside of the box. I've heard comparisons to, like, Charlie Tuna from Jurassic 5, oh, at least from the which was cool within mm-hmm. the cadence of my voice. I've heard down the funky homo sapiens. So mm-hmm. there are some journalists out there that think out the box, but I do think it's pretty lame to compare people to like your race. I don't yeah, know. It's yeah. unnecessary. I agree with that. Yeah, that's corny. So like, um, what's um, your future endeavors, you know, things you're working on now, things you have worked on, you know, best way to contact yeah. you and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm working on a project right now with my friend from new Orleans. Mm-hmm. It's called the experiment. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, me, Harn Solo, and he mm-hmm. is Cali Observer. Okay. And it's going to be a six-track EP. Mm. We did a couple things in the past in New Orleans together, mm-hmm. and we just wanted to make a whole album. So that's the collab album, Solo and Cali, The Experiment. Oh, that's the I got that coming out soon. So I um, already got an album in the making. And then, like I said, I spent five years out there in New Orleans, but I just moved uh, out west. I'm headed to Los Angeles to try to see how I can further advance my career. My publicist is out there. Uh, and I know some people uh, that are within the music industry, so kind of just trying to make that West Coast move and, and trying to see what I can make shake out in California. Um, so definitely at a transition and a crossroads in my life, but I think it's going to be a good one. Yeah, man. And, I, don't, um, I, I, don't, I don't blame you, man. I wish you the best of luck. Like honestly, man. Like continue with your with your with your craft, man. It, it's good, man. It's original, and you know you you go in, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Um, you definitely got to believe in yourself because at times other people won't. So I think this is going to be a good move for me. Uh, mm-hmm. I keep everything updated on harnsolo.com. Okay. So that's a pretty good place. And then Twitter, at harnsolo, H-A-R-N-S-O-L-O. Okay. So it's fairly simple, man. Um, I'm active online. And uh, just want to say peace to my publicist. That's James Dunn with Dunn Deal PR. Okay. Uh, he, he puts a lot of stuff out there for me. You can't do this on your own. You definitely need a team of people around you. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I mentioned my brother, Scott Harney, who's my videographer, and then uh, my producer, Pro Prospect, from New Orleans. So those are some people I like to give shout-outs to. That's what's up, man. I, I honestly appreciate you calling in, man. I'm definitely going to keep that louis armstrong and whatever fire you got in rotation when it comes to the show and like anytime you're in new york man you could definitely come through or you know call in yeah man. yeah the all-star game's out there next year so oh, uh yeah you in here man you in yeah here. i'm a big nba <laughs> fan man i've gone to the last couple in houston and new orleans so yeah. i want to go check out the new arena in brooklyn so i'm definitely going to keep that in mind and give you a holler out there yeah definitely man and keep it keep you know keep doing what you're doing man keep making that good music and you know just keep striving man sweet Thanks so much for the opportunity at Old Westbury for this interview, bro. Uh, I know you guys have a liberal arts college out there and uh, a lot of creative minds and spirits in the area, so it's an honor to be a part of the show, bro. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. And be easy out there, right? Okay. Thank you. All right, man. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. We on it.